So we're going to look at the probability density function here, which is an incredibly important idea in mathematics. Let's just jump straight into an example. So I have some runners at my school running 5Ks. Uh, some are really fast. They can run it in between somewhere between 20 and 21 minutes. I've got about 8.5% of students to do that. And on the other end of the spectrum, about um, less than 1% of students are running between 29 and 30 minutes. So this is a histogram, a probability histogram uh, that you would be fairly familiar with. Now, look at this 20 to 21. Um, that's a big range. That's like a 60 second range. I could cut that in half and then I would have more uh, divisions rather than having 10 divisions in my histogram. I could have 20 divisions in my histogram. So I'm in GeoGebra. I'm going to use my slider here. I'm going to go from 10 divisions to 20 divisions. Uh, let's take a look. Here we are at 20 divisions. Uh, now, from 20 minutes to 20.30, 20.5 minutes, I have about 6% of students, or it looks like I have 6% of students. And from 20.5 minutes to 21 minutes, it looks like I have about 10 point something students for a total of about 17 students in that bin. And now, let's go back to 10 again. So I said a total of about 16 students. If we go back to 10, what we actually have is only a total of about 8.5 students, something like that. Now, something's gone wrong as I moved from 10 divisions to 20 divisions. Uh, let's take a closer look at 10 and 20 side by side. Okay, so here are my two histograms side by side, and they're not quite the histograms that you might be used to seeing, and we're going to see why in a second. Uh, now, with the first one, there's no problems here. We've got our percentage frequency along here. Um, and we can indeed say that about 8.5% of students are running between 20 and 21. Now, here, you'll notice I haven't labelled this percentage frequency because this number actually isn't our percentage frequency at all. What we're going to have to do with um, this number is use it in conjunction with this number here or the bin width. In particular. Zooming in on this one, we can see that the bin width here is 0 0.5. It's 20 to 20.5, 0 0.5. And of course, that's going to be the same here. Now, with this particular histogram, we can't just look up the side to find out our probability of something happening. We instead have to use that bin width in conjunction with this number on the side. So let's find a probability from this one. Uh, let's find the probability of running between 20 and 20.5. 20 so here's my calculation. The probability of running between 20 and 20.5 20 is going to be equal to um, the height. So it's about 6. Point, I don't know, 6.1, let's say. 6.1 times the bin width, 0.5. Uh, and that's going to be 3.05. So there's a 3.05% chance that a student runs between 20 and 20.5. Now I can do the same here. The probability that 20 is less than 20.5 uh, is less than x, which is less than 21. Uh, and here we've got about, it looks like about 10. Point, I don't know, 10.4. And I can multiply that by the bin width as well. And that's going to be 5.2. Okay, so I can say that the total probability of running between 20 and 21 is 3.05 plus 5.2. It's about 8.2. Now, if I go back to my original histogram, you can see that the probability of running between 20 and 21 is about 8.2. So... These are special histograms where if you want to find the probability, you need to consider the area of the column, of the bin. Now, of course, that wasn't a problem here because essentially what I was doing was taking the number 8 point something and multiplying it by the width of the bin, which is 1, which is 1. So I could just kind of read them off the side. But as I change the widths of my bins, I now need to multiply by the bin to get the probability or the width of the bin to get the probability. 
Uh, this allows me to do something pretty neat with it. Now you can see we're back to GeoDrew. We've got our um, distribution here. Now I can increase the bins, right, to like, I don't know, 40. And now I would need to multiply by 0 0.25. I could increase the bins to say, I don't know, 100. And then I would need to figure out what the bin width was for each of those. And I can just keep continuing. Whoa. Until I get something that looks a lot like a curve. And in fact, this distribution, this probability distribution, can be um, can be approximated by a curve like this curve for this particular distribution. Uh, now this curve has some special properties on, about it. So let's put our rectangles back um, and talk some more about that curve. So this neat little thing is a probability density function. And so you can see what we've done is go from a couple of rectangles to some more rectangles to thousands of rectangles. So we can approximate uh, the area under this curve and we can come up with a function. Now, it doesn't matter what that function is. It's quite a complicated looking function. But what matters is that it is a function and we can find areas under functions. We already know how to do that. Uh, and we're going to get some nice little properties going on here. So the first property I want to really draw your attention to is this. Uh, f of x is greater than zero for all x in the domain. What does that mean? It just means that it's above the x-axis throughout the domain of the function. Now, this particular function you can see has a domain between 20 and 30. Okay, so between 20 and 30, this function is greater than zero. Uh, beyond 20 and 30, this function doesn't exist. We've got a restricted domain on this function. Now, another interesting property of our probability density function is the following. The integral between d and c of the function with respect to x is equal to 1. Now, that might seem a little bit odd, so let me break it down for you. Um, we have d, which is our upper limit of our domain. We have C, which is our lower limit of our domain, in this case, 30 and 20. Now, the integral between D and C is the area under that curve. And the area under that curve, we already know, is the probability of things happening. So the probability of this rectangle plus this one, plus this, plus this one, all the way along, the probability of someone running some amount of time for this thing is one. The probability of something happening, the probability of this might be heights or weights, the probability of, of something happening is one. There is a 100% chance that something will happen. The sum of all probabilities is one. And that's just what this says. So the area under all probability density functions is equal to one. And finally, the biggie, the one that you're going to use a lot of, the probability that a is less than x, which is less than b, is equal to the integral between b and a, f of x, with respect to x. Now, what does that mean? Well, in our little drawing here, if you wanted to find the probability that someone could run uh, between, say, uh, the probability that someone could run between 24 and 27 minutes, you would find the integral, so between 24 and 27 minutes, you would find that area. And you would do that by finding the integral between 27 and 24 uh, of the function. Now, I'm not going to do that with this function because it's a complicated function, but that is how you would do it. Uh, and that's a really important part of this probability density function. Now, the really nice thing about this um, is that it doesn't matter when it comes to continuous probability functions whether you write a is less than x or a is less than or equal to x they're the same thing it doesn't matter whether you write x is less than b or x is less than or equal to b it's the same thing uh, and i might tell you why in the next video